What is the link between the meat industry and antibiotic resistant bacteria? You know, a lot of people when I talk about this issue uh, think that I'm maligning meat producers and I'm really not. I think that in many cases meat producers, I'll, I'll use pork producers as an example, they are in a really difficult place. So we've allowed companies to drive small pork producers out of business and make other producers keep getting bigger. And in the hog industry, there are big companies that they don't actually grow the pigs. Um, they own the pigs and they own the pork, but they don't own the farms or the pollution. So they have contracts with what they call contact growers. And those growers get a big loan and they build a hog barn. And the meat company brings them the piglets and they bring them the feed, and they bring them the, the feed as antibiotics into it. It's pre-mixed in many cases. And they give all that to the farmer, and they say, um, we want you to raise these pigs to slaughter weight, but we don't want any of the risk. You have all the risk. So if your manure lagoon breaks, the risk is on you. If you get a big outbreak, the risk is on you. If the government decides that you shouldn't be using antibiotics and your barn's too contaminated uh, and it's making your pig sick, the risk is on you. The only thing we care about is your meat. So you have all the risk, we get all the profit. And that's the way the business is structured. So now we've got an epidemic of resistance. And so we basically know that the industry is broken. It's concentrated all this production of pigs in very small areas with a lot of antibiotics because there's a lot of disease in these facilities. Well, we could build better facilities, but that would mean making the farmer assume even more debt to build a new facility. And they haven't finished paying off the old facility. So what are we gonna do? Um, I think the farmers in some cases feel like they, they have to just dig in their heels and say, no, this is the way we do it. This is the way we want to keep doing it. And, you know, in the medical profession on the other side, we're saying, but if you keep doing it that way, we may not have antibiotics for very much longer. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of where we're stuck. I will tell you that in the countries where they've made the biggest gains at reducing antibiotic use in, in farms, on farms, it's where there's been a partnership between the government and the meat industry. And there's been some sharing of resources, there's been some help provided, and they have like a common goal, and we don't have that. What would happen if you remove the antibiotics from these pig farms? Right, well, it's interesting, because the, the claim by the pig industry has been that they need antibiotics to keep their animals healthy, but in fact, their animals keep getting sicker and sicker. Um, and that's from surveys that the USDA actually does. They, they ask a certain number of hog farmers, like, have you had more problems with this and this? And over the last several years, they have more and more problems. They say that antibiotics are the key to keep the animals healthy. We've been using a ton of antibiotics and the animals are less and less healthy. So something's gotta give. I think the problem is that what really has to give is a whole new approach to keeping animals healthy. More vaccines, uh, better nutrition, uh, better breeding, giving the animals more space, probably moving some of these farms so they're not all so close together because that also makes more animals sick. You know, when they pass around diseases from farm to farm and it's super easy because they're just down the road from one another. Um, but all those other things that aren't antibiotics take two things, knowledge and resources. Well, we've got the knowledge, um, but we don't, the farmer doesn't often have the knowledge. It used to be that the universities had extension agents and they would go out to the farms and say, hey, we've got this new problem we wanna tell you about. Well, um, as the number of farms has declined, those extension agents have disappeared. The universities didn't want to support them anymore. The taxpayers didn't want to support them anymore. So there's nobody other than the drug companies and the meat companies providing knowledge to the farmers. And those two entities are telling the farmers, hey, what you're doing is great, keep doing it. Can animals be raised without antibiotics? 
Of course animals can be raised without antibiotics. They, they always have been. You know, before there were antibiotics, did we raise animals? Yes. Did we enjoy meat? Yes. How did we do it? The same way we always did it before antibiotics. We did everything we could to keep the animals healthy. Uh, sometimes they got an infection. There were certain things we could do to prevent infections. We did those things. Uh, the problem has been with abundant cheap antibiotics. And keep in mind that in 23 states, if you buy antibiotics to put in your pig feed, you don't have to pay taxes on it. There's an exemption from the sales tax. So there are little laws like that that actually incentivize people to use more antibiotics. So anyway, um, so antibiotics are cheap, too cheap, uh, at least for that purpose, and they're abundant, and so we've used them instead of investing in other things. Where's the research into stronger, more resilient breeds? Where's the research into um, uh, better animal feeds? Where's the research into uh, vaccines? You know, one of the problems is in human medicine, if you don't want people to get some bacterial infection, maybe you can have a vaccine for it. But the pharmaceutical companies see a good market, and so they're more likely to invent that vaccine. The market is much smaller in, on farms, and so we don't have a compelling incentive for companies to create farm vaccines. Um, so I think we could do a lot more on that score. Again, leadership is lacking. I think a lot of these things could be done if only there was more leadership. And you know, compared to the trillions that we're gonna spend trying to reverse this epidemic, it would be money well spent. If there's antibiotic resistant bacteria in meat we're buying, then why aren't even more people getting sick and dying from antibiotic resistant bacteria? Yeah, so one of the things that I try to explain to people about the environment and health is that we're not all the same person. Some of us have naturally better immunity. Um, so you might get exposure to one bacteria and then you it causes a really bad disease. In me, nothing happens. How do we explain that? Well, how do we explain that you might get lung cancer and I don't, even though I smoke 30 pack years? You know, people are just people, they're different. Uh, and it's the same with these resistant bugs. Um, also, just because there's bugs in the meat, you might cook your food better, you might prepare it better, you might be more sanitary in the kitchen. You know, there's all sorts of other factors involved. Um, I think one can get tied up trying to look for explanations about why that person gets sick and this one doesn't, and it really distracts us from the bigger issue. Is resistance getting worse? Yes. Do we, knew what, do we know what's driving it? Yes antibiotic use and overuse. So rather than tie up ourselves in knots trying to answer all these questions, it would be great if we could all just agree on tackling the one thing we can all agree on, that antibiotic overuse is driving the problem. Because we know how to do that.